as a means of social control. They have no job for you. See, they build prisons in some places based on reading levels of second and third graders. See, and then the privatization of prisons puts an economic incentive into putting you in a prison and keeping you in a prison. That's why the education programs in the prisons that will give young brothers, help them get their GED and get their degree, they are being decimated. They are being decimated. And yet they will put you in prison. Now you don't fly the drugs in the community. You don't have any planes. Even when Johnson tried to buy a, a, a airline, they say, no, you're not, we're not having it. So you don't have any planes, you don't fly any drugs in, and yet you have the CIA flood. We have exact, we have proof of that. They flooded LA with crack. We didn't bring that in here. See, and then they will step back and say, look at these niggas on TV. Look at these Negroes, they are crazy. What has happened to us? If you did it to another people, not only would they be in the same position, they'd be that, and then they'd be destroyed. But it is by the grace of God that we have not been destroyed. It is because of that covenant that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He cannot destroy us to the full. Enough has happened to us to destroy another people. We don't manufacture guns, but guns flood our communities. See, that's a problem. And our thinking, we still have a slave mentality too. Because we still depend on other people to educate us. And educate our children. And tell us what's right. See, we have a God. We need to do these things for ourselves. But he says we are snared in holes and hid in prison houses. We are filling up the jails at astronomical rates. We are 12 to 14% of the population and yet we are the ones who are 50% in prison. And then you look at all the brothers on probation or on parole. That, again, is a means of social control. But the Lord told you where you would be. Now think about it. That's Israel. Snared in holes and hidden prison houses. Now the ones who call themselves Israel, call themselves a Jew. How many of them are in prison? How many of them, furthermore, don't they run the economic institutions? Don't they run the media? Again, this is not about hate. I'm not telling you to hate anybody. I don't hate them at all. I'm just pointing out a, a fabrication. I'm pointing out a fallacy. I'm pointing out blasphemy of them that say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. That's not my word. That's the word of God. You can get mad with me if you want to. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Isaiah 1. Because we have lost it. We have lost it. And we are in... A situation of despair and darkness, spiritually speaking, as a people. This is Isaiah 1 and verse, verse 2. This is, listen to the words of Isaiah. And then we get to the root of our problem. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For the Lord hath spoken. I have nursed and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. See, we are the children of Israel. He gave us his name. Israel was the Lord's name. He adopted us. We are his firstborn. Isn't that what he told Moses told Pharaoh? That we need to come out and, and sacrifice unto our God? He said, let my people go even my firstborn. It says, verse 3, the ox know this owner. So this is the beast will know who his owner is. And the ass his master's crib. So the ass knows where he lives. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. Consider your situation. Why are children being killed like dogs in the street and nothing happened? And I don't know if something will happen or not. But the simple fact that such an injustice could occur, in the Trayvon Martin case in particular, and you have these thousands of people that, will, that have to protest to bring light to it, shows us we haven't considered. The simple fact that I, the sister in Georgia, Catherine Johnston, who in a botched drug raid, what happened to her? One of our elders was shot and killed by the police. We haven't considered. Look at our prison rates. We haven't considered. You 
For drug crime, you wanna you wanna see some real drug use? Go on these white college campuses. They'll show you some drug use. Are the police there to arrest them? Not really. Not really. Because it's not about drug use. It's about control. It's about control. It's about who uses the drugs. Who sells the drugs? We don't really control drugs. We are the ones that go to jail for drugs. We're not the ones money laundering this drug money in these banks. That's some of your political leaders. That's some of your, your government institutions doing these things. We're not the ones running, having programs running to and fro through Mexico. Perpetuating violence there. And as well as here. We're not doing that. We are pawns in the game. So it says, the ox knoweth his owner and his ass his master's crib, but Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. He goes on to say, our sinful nation of people laying with iniquity. We are laying with iniquity or with sin and sin is transgression of God's law. Get back to God's law. That is the solution. Repent and turn to him. Get back to his law. That's what we need to do. Not, not what we go to church and hear because we've been told that the law is no more. I'm talking about the law that's written in the scriptures. That's what I'm talking about. Get back to the word of God. In order to do that, you'd have to come up out of these hell holes, these rat holes, whatever you want to call these, these churches because they are like white as sepulchers. They look pretty on the outside, but inside you see death. So it is with these churches. So a sinful nation that people laid with iniquity. A seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. That's what's happened to us. And that's why we're punished. Let's go to Amos. Let's go to Amos. That's why we're in the condition that we're in. This is Amos 3 and 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. Listen. Listen to the word, you so-called African-American, you so-called black, you so-called color, you so-called Negro. Listen. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against your children of Israel, against the whole family, which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known of all the nations of the earth. So we are the nation that he knew. Out of all the nations of the earth, he chose us and manifested himself unto us and made a covenant with us. We are his firstborn. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. I'm going to punish you for all your sins. That's why our children are being killed in the street. That's why our children fill up the jails. That's why we are economically destroyed. That's why we endure slavery and captivity. It wasn't because of our inferiority like we have been told and taught repeatedly. It is because we sinned against God. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, back to Deuteronomy. Because in order to know about this situation, you have to, the situations that we endure as a whole, you have to step back and get to the root. Let's get to the root. This is Deuteronomy 4 and verse 24. Deuteronomy 4 and verse 24. It said, For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. See, you can't call yourself a child of God and then worship falsely with some other God. He likens the relationship between him and his, his people as that between a man and a woman. And he is je we, the church who is in the church is Israel. The church is not a building, the church is the people. You read in Acts 7, the Acts the seventh chapter, Stephen tells you who the church is. The church was in the wilderness. The church is Israel. So that's who the church is. Not the Baptist, not the Methodist, not the not the Catholic. The church is the people. The church is Israel. So when we sinned, it was like a, it was like a woman sleeping with another man. That is not her husband. And God is a jealous God. That's why he finally cast us out. He kicked us out of his house. That's what happened. So this is uh, verse 25. When thou shalt beget children and children's children, and ye shall have remained long in the land, and shall corrupt yourselves. See, this is Moses telling what was to happen. He said, he prophesied. He said, look, when you remain long in the land, you corrupt yourselves. We had to start corrupting ourselves when he was on the mountain. Lord said, look, you, the, you, the children, that, the people that you brought out of the land, Moses, 
They have corrupted themselves. They made a false god. They made an idol. We had made golden calves and said, these be the gods that brought you out of the land of Egypt. That's what we did. We took the, the jewels that we had spoiled the Egyptians with. And we made a golden calf. See, the corruption had already started. But he says, you're going to remain long in the land. And you're going to corrupt yourselves more and more. And he says something. And make a graven image or the likeness of anything. And shall do evil in the sight of the Lord thy God to provoke him to anger. So you're going to anger the Lord and he's going to tell you what's going to happen. Verse 26. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day. That ye shall soon utterly perish from off the land where until ye go over joy to possess it. Ye shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly be destroyed. So they had to cross over Jordan to get to that land. He said, before they even went, he said, I'm telling you now, you're going to corrupt yourselves and you're going to be destroyed. It says in the, verse 27, And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. And that's why we're in the United States. Among the heathen. And heathen are people that, just don't, that don't know God. That's all the heathen is. So that's why we're here. That's why we've been, because we've been scattered. As Moses prophesied of, and that's how you know the word of God is true. He's telling you this before they even go into the promised land. He's telling you this. He's telling you about the transatlantic slave trade before it even takes place, brothers and sisters. That's how you know the word of God is real. That's how you know it. No other book does that. No other book does that. The Quran doesn't do it. The book, uh, the book of the Mormon doesn't do it. The Egyptian book of the dead doesn't do it. See, this is the word of God. How do you know this is the word of God? Because of the prophecies of this book. He tells the end before the beginning. So once you see it and you see it come to pass and the manifestation of it, you know that he is God. He told you what would happen. He inhabits eternity. He was and is and is to come. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. So he knows all. He's omniscient. That's God. Verse 28. And there you shall serve God's the work of men's hands. You're going to bow down to statues and wear crosses and crucifixes around your neck. Wood and stone was neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. So you're going to serve these false gods. Christmas trees in your house. You read Jeremiah the tip chapter, it says the stock of a tree is vanity. See, that's a God. Some worshipers used to put that in their house, the evergreen tree as a God. And then you have all these black people walking around here buying Christmas trees, strapping them on their on they roof of their car, then putting them in their house, almost setting their house on fire, and then bowing down to that false God to get the presents out. That's old pagan worship. We need to abandon and then spending all of your money going broke, maxing out credit cards. To buy some gifts for some snotty-nosed kids that you have not taught. Because they do not have the law, statutes, and commandments of God. The Bible says we're supposed to teach our children. We're supposed to teach our children. When we rise up, when we walk, and before we lie down, we're supposed to be dealing with the Word of God. As you can see, our children, we have not done this. We have failed in this. But we have given them the lies that were given to us. So it says... And there he shall serve God's the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. This is what we're doing. In captivity, worshiping false gods. Filling up these so-called mega churches. That's what we're doing. While the man or the woman is up there getting rich, we're going broke, living a lie. It says, verse 29, But if from this thou shalt seek the Lord thy God. So if you really seek him, come up out of these churches. And if you really seek him, with all thy heart and with all thy soul. When thou art in tribulation. When you are in trouble. And the tribulation to come. And all these things that come upon thee. Even in the latter days. The days we are living in right now. Because before you saw the perpetual cycle. You read about it in Judges where Israel was sin. Then they would feel the pain from that sin. Because the Lord would bring the Philistines and some people upon them. Then they would cry out unto the Lord and turn back to him. Then the Lord would deliver them. Then they would start sinning again. Well, that cycle continued until finally he just kicked us out of the land. And we went into Egypt by way of ships or the house of bondage by way of ships. And were sold unto our enemies as bond men and bond women. And no man has redeemed us yet. Because he's the one that's going to redeem us at his second coming when he comes back. He's going to gather us. You read that in Matthew the 24th chapter. Read 29 through 31. 
He says, but even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God and shall be obedient unto his voice. So we need to turn to him and be obedient unto his voice and do what's actually written in the word. Not what some false minister, teacher, pastor, preacher, apostle is telling us. Because if what he is saying, if what she is saying, a woman even shouldn't even be preaching. That's a whole other thing. But if what they're, is, what they're saying is contrary to the word of God, you know they are not sent by God. He's not going to send you anybody that's going to tell you something contrary to what's written in his word. Rather, the minister, the teacher, the pastor, the preacher, the true one is going to teach you what thus saith the Lord, whether you like it or not. Whether it's accepted or not. Whether it's politically correct or not. When thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God and shall be obedient unto his voice. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers which he swear unto them. So he's not going to forget that covenant. So we must turn back to him. Let's go to Deuteronomy the 30th chapter. Because we're going to turn back to God as a people. He's even going to bring us back into the wilderness once again. And then he's going to he's going to purge this little rod of iron. But that's a whole nother well, it's related, actually. But, uh, chapter 30, Deuteronomy 30 and verse 1. Because right now, really what I'm focusing on is what we must do right now. We must turn back to God. We must turn back to God. And we haven't done that in this country at all. In this captivity. We need to turn to God. Verse 30, uh, chapter 30 and 1. And it shall come to pass when all these things have come upon thee, the blessing and the curse. So we experience the blessing and we definitely have experienced the curse. Curse of slavery and oppression and segregation. Economic exploitation. No power. It says, after the blessing and the curse which I have said before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee. So you need to call it to mind today. Consider. He said, my people have not considered. The ox nor his owner and the ass his master's crib, but my people doth not consider. You need to consider. Whether the Lord thy God have driven thee. So all the nations you had, consider this in Brazil. Consider this in Great Britain. Consider this in France. Consider this in Central America. Consider this, you African American. That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. Because he says, and thou shalt return unto the Lord thy God and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Thou and thy children, with all thy heart and with all thy soul. That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee. And will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God has scattered thee. See, this is what we must do. This is what we must do. We must turn back to God. That is the solution. Turn back to God. And that has always been the solution. The solution is not voting. We've been voting for how long? And we see the same garbage that we've seen before we were voting. Because the answer is not pol politics. It's not political. Again, it's not economic. It's not you must get a degree. Many, of, many, especially our sisters, are getting degrees. And what's happening, they can't find a husband. So they can't build a family. So they can't raise the children as they should. It's not, it's not, the answer is not, as some, and I'm going to call it what it is, some foolish people would say uh, uh, to take up weapons. Now, I'm not saying it's foolish to fight, but it is foolish to fight when God is not with you. If God is not with you, you'll be like Joshua and the children of Israel when they went against Ai. They went in one way and, fl and, and, and flee seven ways. Why? Because God was not with them at that time because they had not been obedient in a certain situation. If you have not been obedient. How you, uh, as God's chosen people, how you going to go out and fight? God is not going to be with you. Matter of fact, he's going to be with your enemies. And make sure you get crushed. And that's what's happened to us. Again, it's not economic empowerment. We saw what they did to us. Black Wall Street. We, we, we had our own banks and, and businesses and homes. And, what, and what, did, what did our enemies do? They came in. They killed us. And they burned that stuff down to the ground. The Lord allowed it. You got to think about that. The Lord says high and looks low. He knows all, sees all. He saw that. But you won't consider. 
who your God is. Thus, because you don't consider who your God is, you don't understand your problem. And because you don't understand your problem, you are in the dark. You are in the dark. You are in the dark. And that's why you depend on people with perms and people who have questionable morality, people who, who, who support abortions and, and, and same-sex marriage, but they're supposed to be your moral leaders. We are in a mess. I'm talking about the big, I'm talking about the big time uh, so-called civil rights leaders today. We are in a mess. They're pimping you. They're pimping you. And they called on every situation like the Trayvon Martin case. Sean Bell case, Austin Grant, and other cases, and they profit from it while we as a people are still in the same condition. And we will be in a condition until we turn back to God. He's told us the solution here. He's told us the solution even before we were established as a nation. Because he, he told us what was going to happen to us and the curses we would endure. But he said, after the blessing and the curse, if you would turn to the, God, the Lord thy God and hearken unto his voice, with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind, then he will turn thy captivity. He will turn your captivity, but you have to turn to him. Let's go to 2 Chronicles. Let's go to 2 Chronicles. Because the answer is clear. You want justice, you want freedom, and I'm not talking about in this, in this one particular case, Per se. Because the case, truthfully told, is, is the situation is bigger than that. Because we this is happening all over the country. It's happening all over the country. And it's been happening. Violence against us has been happening. Our destruction has been happening. I'm use that to, to focus on the larger destruction of our people because it's all a symptom. We have to get to the root of the problem. This is 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles, the 6th chapter, and verse 12. And it reads as follows. And he, talking about Solomon, stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands. In verse 14, and said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in the heaven, nor on the earth, which keepeth covenant and showeth mercy unto thy servants that walk before thee with all their hearts. In verse 36 it says, they're talking about his people, if they sin against thee, for there is no man which sinneth not, and thou be angry with them and deliver them over before their enemies, and they carry them away captives unto another land far off or near. Just like what's happened to us, listen to Solomon's prayer. Yet if they bethink themselves in the land whither they are carried captive, and turn and pray unto thee in the land of their captivity, saying, We have sinned, we have done amiss, and have dealt wickedly. We must acknowledge our sins, brothers and sisters. We must acknowledge the fact that we have broken the laws and statutes, the commandments of God. Verse 38, If they return to thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their captivity, whether they have carried them captives, and pray toward that land, pray toward the land of Israel, particularly pray toward Jerusalem as Daniel did three times a day while he was in captivity. Which thou gavest unto their fathers and toward that city which thou hast chosen and toward the house which I have built for thy name. Pray towards Jerusalem, the spot where that temple was. Then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, their prayer and their supplications and maintain their cause and forgive thy people which have sinned against thee. See, that's the solution. He's asking for forgiveness. We're going to acknowledge our sin. And we're going to pray toward that city of peace. Jerusalem. Pray toward where your temple was. That city that you chose. In the lands of our captivity. See, you saw the problem. Why the problem came. Because we sinned. You saw what happened. We were taken in captivity. And you see the solution. We must repent and turn to God. With all our soul, with all our heart, and with all our mind. That's what we must do. Let's, ver let's go to 2 Chronicles 7 and read verse 12. Because the Lord accepted his prayer. 7 and 12. 2 Chronicles 7 and 12. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and I have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, if I command the locusts to devour the land, if I send pestilence among the people, if my people 
which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. This is the solution, brothers and sisters. Turn back to God. You want justice? Turn back to God. You want deliverance? Turn back to God. You want peace? Turn back to God. You want liberation? Turn back to God. You want economic empowerment, political empowerment, military empowerment? Turn back to God because he is the true power source. But you have to learn of him and you have to do what he has commanded us to do. This is our problem. Turning back to him is our solution. I want to thank you for your time.